Hi everyone, Damien here. I'm back for part two of the sous vide circulator review between the ANOVA and the Jewel by Chef Steps. So one of the reasons it took me, the main reason it took me so long to make part two of this is I wanted to spend a lot more time with the Jewel and really put it through its paces before I gave any type of impression or experience that I've had with it. I've obviously had a lot of time with the uh, ANOVA and the pronunciation of that brings me to a point. So a lot of the, re a lot of, uh, I'm gonna cover a lot of uh, comments that I received in the first video and I loved all the comments. Um, negative, positive, whatever. Constructive is always good. Um, I apologize, I'm gonna make this video a lot quicker. That first one ran way too long, so I'm sorry about that, guys. Uh, first off, uh, ANOVA versus ANOVA. So someone, or a couple of someone's commented that uh, I'm pronouncing it wrong. I've never seen any promotional video or anything from ANOVA to know exactly how to pronounce it. So I looked it up and it looks like most people are pronouncing it ANOVA. So I will try to pronounce it ANOVA, not ANOVA. I've been doing, I've been saying ANOVA for two years. So if I slip up here and there, uh, sorry about that. Um, and uh, I wasn't sure in the last video, sous vide or sous vide, you know, with a hard D. And a couple people did respond and say in French, the D is pronounced. So indeed it is sous vide. Now into the breakdown of these. So uh, at the time of my last video, there were some discrepancies, I think, in uh, the price at the time. It was November, people were probably getting some really killer deals, Black Friday deals. So I went onto the respective websites of both of these and I looked up their official pricing. Maybe you can get them cheaper, uh, third party, but this is what they're offered. Um, this, these are the prices they're offered directly from their respective manufacturers. So, First off, uh, let me say that everything that this video covers and the last one in reference to the ANOVA circulator, it's the, what I have is the older, the original uh, of this style at least, 800 watt Bluetooth only circulator. It's not the newer 900 watt Wi-Fi and Bluetooth model. So the new one is a little more powerful, but the one I'm gonna go over is the 800 just because that's what I have and that's what I've been using. So the uh, older one, you can still buy this, the uh, 800 watt uh, Bluetooth only ANOVA goes for uh, $149. The newer model, the 900 watt Bluetooth and Wi-Fi model is $199. The Jewel, it's still just the one that they have got out right now. Um, I haven't heard anything about a newer updated model. I'm sure they're working on it. But the Jewel, 1100 watts, uh, and it goes for $199 as well. Um, build quality, let's go over build quality. So obviously I've used the ANOVA quite a bit. The build quality has been great. I really only have one complaint about it, and that is the, uh, the clamp to clamp it on the side of a bucket or whatever you're gonna use. And my complaint about the clamp is, it's got this nice flat surface, but uh, on the, uh, the screw in here, it's just, a, it basically comes to a single point. I would love to see a large flat piece of uh, rubber or something that it pushes up against to give it a, a, you know, a lot more surface area. So what happens is I use a seven gallon uh, large uh, plastic bucket. So when I hang this on the side, I screw it all the way in, and that one little contact point doesn't hold it, so just the moving water causes it to, on the side of the, the bucket, to tilt. Now, it's not a big deal. I just straighten it back up and tighten it. It would just be nice to have just a little bit more contact on this clamp. And obviously, they don't need to change anything about the circulator itself. It really is just, put this aside, it really is just this mount. And you know if that would be that'd be a huge improvement. Maybe I haven't actually. I don't know what the clamps on the newer uh, the newer one looks like. Maybe they've changed this. If they have, I'm gonna jump on there and probably buy one. I gotta check into that. So as far as build quality, it's been great. Um, that's the only one thing I'd really change. The Jewel has also been a champ. However, I have run into a problem. Not a big problem at all. It is just a small problem. The clamp that you use to, to hang it on the side of a bucket or, or whatever you're gonna use it, it's it's come loose. So whatever adhesive, you can see that, whatever adhesive they've used to stick the top of this clamp to the body, it, you know, it hasn't, hasn't held. So I have to hold the top and then pull 
to put it down on top of, you know, to put it on the, the lip of, you know, whatever your, your cooking vessel is. Um, it works fine though still because the, the cord has a, it's like they've got a grommet that goes inside. So it's nice and it's still nice and tight. It's just kind of a pain and I might give them a call and see if that's, if there's something they can do about that. Either send me a new one or I guess I could just use some two-part epoxy, but that's kind of ghetto for, uh, you know, an item that, that, should last and I haven't I don't think I've used it enough to have had that happen I'm not rough with it I use it I do cook a lot with it but I only use it once a week and I'll cook multiple batches all at the same time so once a week I'll put it on a bucket it'll cook it'll run it runs for about eight hours but that obviously isn't affecting the, um, the you know this this hanger and then I'll take it off so I use it once a week and in that short time this has already popped loose Maybe that's something that's common. I haven't really looked into it enough to worry about it, but I will here soon. Let's see, moving on. So uh, one of the comments is uh, the jewel can be positioned. In my last video, I, I talked about the ejection port and how on um, the jewel, it just shoots against the back wall as, as opposed to the Innova, you can, you can change it so that you can do a more circular pattern, which I liked. And I wasn't really sure at that time if that was a big deal. Um, so someone did mention it does, obviously it does have a magnetic bottom. So if you're using a pan, stick it in your pan, you can simply just turn it and that will change the direction of this ejection port. So it basically does the exact same thing as the Innova. Only problem is if you're using something other than uh, a pan that is, you know, you can stick the magnet to, if you're using a bucket like I do, it has to hang on the side. So there is no changing at that point. You can't change it. Now that I've used it a lot though, I have to say, I think the direction of this ejection port, uh, you know, the water flow, it seems to be a bit of a moot point. I can't say that it really makes one difference one way or another, where it, whether it's straight out against the back wall, the container, like the jewel, or <clears throat> is adjustable really. And by like the Anova is, <clears throat> doesn't really matter. So, We'll just skip on over that. I know I kind of made a deal of it last time, but at the time I didn't know. So now I know, doesn't seem to really matter one bit. All right. Uh, let's see. So my, in my uh, first uh, part one of this uh, review, I did mention that the Jewel says they're, it's listed as water resistant, but I'm not about to drop my $200 uh, tool into the water just to test it. I use it every day, or not every day, I use it every week and we rely on it. And we cook 40 to 50 pounds of chicken alone every week, so I can't have this thing down just for a test. Um, however, someone did comment that they accidentally put their jewel in the water upside down. Oops. Luckily, uh, the commenter said they were able to pull it out fairly quickly, let it dry off, and it worked like a champ. So there's that. The Anova, it's got these exhaust ports, there's cooling ports on the back. I really wouldn't trust dropping this thing in the water at all. So just not gonna do it. Uh, let's see. Oh, on to my biggest complaint, <clears throat> and probably everybody's biggest complaint about the Jewel is the fact that you have to use an app. That alone just kills me. Um, I absolutely, I hate using the app for the Jewel. I'm not saying that it's a bad app because it's not a bad app. It's just the fact that I have to use an app at all. Now, if you're new to sous vide cooking and you don't necessarily know what temperatures you want something cooked at, then the app is probably a great thing for you. It's got visual doneness. So say you're cooking a steak, you drop your steak in, you've got no idea what temperature you want to cook it, that you need to cook it at to get to say medium rare. So you open up the app and it's got a picture and it's got pictures. What do you want your steak to look like? You tap on the picture and it's pre-programmed for a certain temperature. Now I disagree with some of their temperatures, but that's just personal preference. Um, however, you know, for an experienced user, as you get used to it and you know about what you like all your meat cooked at, the visual doneness is now pointless. Um, I cook uh, steaks at medium rare between 128 and 129. I think the app, wanted to do it at 132, 133. I could be a little off on that, but you know, at some point, once you know what temperature you want stuff cooked at and you, if you've used it enough and you remember that, again, visual doneness is kind of pointless. So I'm back to the fact that you have to use an app to set the temperature. And the problem I have 
Here at home, I've got it connected to Wi-Fi and it works pretty well connected to Wi-Fi. Problem is I go to my commercial kitchen where we cook and there's no Wi-Fi available. There's no Wi-Fi network. There's no reason to really have one. So I have to rely on the Bluetooth connectivity of my between my phone and the Jewel. And here's where the problem really arises is that every single time without fail, well, I can't say every time, 90% of the time without fail, when I initially try to connect my phone to the Jewel, plug the Jewel in, it's powered up, it's ready to go, phone is sitting right next to it, open up the app, and it sits and spins and spins and spins and says it can't find it. Then I have to hit another button that says go into troubleshooting. So it opens up another screen. And I read through the list, yeah, yeah, I've done all that. Hit OK, and it spins and spins and spins, and, and then it finds it. Almost every single time, initially, it can't find, the phone can't find the jewel, the, the app can't find the jewel. Go into troubleshooting, and with doing nothing other than saying, I think, hit OK, and it searches for it again and finds it. That's just one annoyance. The other problem I have is when I want to come back to the, you know, if I've got it heating or I'm waiting for the water to come up temp, come up to temperature and um, so I turn you, you know you turn the screen on your phone off you come back to it unlock my phone open up the app because it was the last thing I ran <clears throat> and it's got to reconnect again what happens the phone's got to reconnect again and half the time you got to go through that troubleshooting thing or sometimes when it does connect it just seems to take a good 30 seconds doesn't sound like long but when you're busy running around the kitchen trying to get a lot of things done all at once that extra time where you have to sit there and okay come on connect come on connect you know that's wasted time and i really just don't have time for that and it's annoying physical controls please otherwise i absolutely love this thing so it's i found out it's a whole lot faster and easier if I just get out my trusty thermopen, stick it in the water, oh, I know what the temperature is. It's a whole lot faster to do that than jerking around with the phone. So just a tip there. All right, now having used each of these for some time now, and I use really large batches. So, you know, depending on this model, uh, it's either eight or 900, depending on which one we're talking about. In this case, we're talking about the 800. You get two to 300 watts of extra heating, power, whatever you want to call it, with the Jewel. And that can make a big difference, at least in my use, uh, the type of scenario I cook in. And this isn't going to apply to the, your home cooks at all. So what I do is I'll load up the big seven gallon bucket and I'll usually cook 10 to maybe 18 pounds in a single batch. And it cooks at 147, that's what I've been cooking at lately, and I let it run for two hours just to be safe and I can go do other things and uh, you know get a lot done. So after some cooking, I take all that, usually it's probably chicken, I take all that chicken out, set aside, get it cooling, and then I take my next batch and I go ahead and stick it in the water. And just due to the fact that the chicken's cold, it's been sitting in the refrigerator, you can't just leave it out, um, that brings the temperature of the water down. So it's no longer at 147. And I can't restart, I can't start the two hour timer, cook timer, until that water is back up to 147 degrees where I want it. So here's where that extra power really comes in handy. Uh, is what I call the bounce back. How long does it take? I put the chicken in. How long does it take the circulator to get that temperature? It usually drops five to eight degrees at least. You know, and the, and the time that it takes the circulator to get that back up to 147 degrees, and I can start that two hour cook timer and get it going again. And the difference is about three to one. So whatever that time is, I, I haven't actually, I, it's probably like five minutes or so on the Jewel, and it takes almost 15 minutes on uh, the ANOVA, the 800. Probably be a little less than the 900, but that extra power does make a difference for my use scenario. And that's why if one of these were to die, even with my frustrations and having to use a stupid app, I'd buy another Jewel. But that's like, again, just for the way I use these. Okay, so I've done a new test. And to make it a lot quicker, um, what I've done is instead of a big five gallon bucket I used last time, that just took way too long, I got two gallon buckets. And I adjusted the test a little bit based on some comments I got, some really good comments and some really good ideas. Um, one of the things I did is I, I ran both these tests separately. Someone mentioned that because maybe I was running them on the same circuit, that each one of them wasn't getting full power. So I ran these tests completely independent. So each, you know each one got its full you know, power to give it, to provide that 800 watts to you know, this one to 1100. So it got full power. 
Another thing I changed is to make it apples to apples is I adjusted the Innova so that the ejection port is straight out against the back of the container, just like the Jewel. And that kind of takes that out of the equation. Let's see. And the other thing I came up with, and I was thinking about, <clears throat> is the way that is the uh, the way that the Jewel works is it sucks water up into, and it's got a heating, I don't know exactly how it works. It's got a little heater in here, cool little heater. I don't think it doesn't heat quite the same as the Innova, which is a heating element and just touching the water. And then it sucks it up and spits it out. So what I thought was looking at the Innova, if you look at its heating element in that last test, just because of the level of the water and the amount of water I was using, um, I think only about two, maybe two to three inches of this whole heating element was submerged in water. So in the new test, what I did is that since I was able to use a smaller two gallon, little two gallon container, I got it all the way up so that this uh, heating element is completely covered. And I don't know, probably most heat does come from the bottom, uh, you know, this coil here at the bottom, but having not having the entire thing covered, I'm guessing, you know, it'd be helpful uh, to have the entire thing covered to give it the most heating uh, ability, whatever you want to call it, uh, that, that it can. So in that new test, I got that heating element completely covered. This is, works just the same. And so I re-ran re -ran those tests. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put the tests side by side at the end of this video. And I'm going to give you my conclusion and just give you some numbers here so you don't have to watch all the way to the end. If you want to watch the end, that's great. Um, I'll have them sped up, but they still did take 20 to 40 minutes. And so we'll just, you, you can watch, like I said, you can watch it if you want. First of all, I do want to say that there was a discrepancy in the thermometer readings. Um, the Joule was off by 0.2 degrees. So it was 0.2 degrees high. So it thought it was warmer than it was, 0.2. That's really low. Pretty much whatever it says on the screen, it, you're pretty much right there. The Innova had a discrepancy of 1.5, so a degree and a half off. So what I had to do is I had to, when I did the test, I had it overshoot to 148 and a half. And the way I knew that is using the trusty Thermapen, I realized um, that the Innova is definitely off by about a degree and a half. Oh, and one last thing with the test, someone did mention that they thought their Innova, when they would set it to a certain temperature, as, it, as the uh, circular approach at temperature, it would actually slow down as far as, you know, slow down the heating process to try to match up. Um, and not overshoot the target temp. So what I did is instead of 147, I set the ANOVA to 167 to completely take that out of the equation as well. And the final numbers are, and the test is from tap water, it's 58 degrees, both of them are exactly the same, to 147 degrees, and it's gonna be 147 degrees corrected for each of them, the point off by 0.2 and off by uh, a degree and a half. So the, <clears throat> the Joule, 24 minutes and 30 seconds. The, so it's 24 minutes, 30 seconds. The Innova, again, 800 watt, not the 900. It corrected 37 minutes, 31 seconds. 37 minutes and 31 seconds. So that's a difference, an advantage to the Joule of 13 minutes and five seconds. So it took the Innova 13 minutes and five seconds longer to heat from 58 degrees Fahrenheit up to 147. Now, please don't actually do this. I don't ever do this. It's just a complete waste of time and money. I just did this for fun, just out of curiosity. That's why I've done these tests. Anybody that actually uses these knows you don't just put in cold water. Um, you know, maybe if you want to do a um, you know a later cook where you you put cold water in, you put your meat in, and it's sitting at home, and you're at work, and you can, you know, remotely connect and Actify, it's on Wi-Fi, and you can start it up that way, and then by the time you get home, it's ready. Maybe you would do it in that scenario, but if you're home cooking, please don't do this. It just takes so much extra time and electricity for uh, the circulators to heat the water up. Just use that. Anyone's going to use the hot water right out of their tap. Mine comes out at 154, 152-ish, somewhere like that. By the time I fill up that big seven-gallon bucket and get the chicken in, it's pretty much ready to go. So there's no wait, and you know your uh, water heater's already done the work. So if you want to do this, fine, just for fun, but just don't do it all the time. This is a waste. So, um, with that said, my conclusion, they're both great. They really are. Um, it really comes down to preference as far as, you know, the physical controls, 
but then you you give up some some extra wattage there, some extra power, which for home cooking isn't really going to matter one bit, honestly. So I, as far as you know, if you're cooking at home, four, five, six people or so, I wouldn't even think about the whole 800, 900 watt versus 1100. It's kind of a moot point, really. Because uh, the, the only thing the circulator has to do is keep the water at a certain temperature, not raise it from 58 and these ridiculous tests that I did. So that's kind of uh, a moot point. Uh, so it really comes down to you know what you want. Are you okay with the app? Do you like the aesthetics, the Apple of circulators? Even this cute little plug. You know, or are you okay with the larger size ANOVA with physical controls? Um, just for my purpose, I'd buy another Jewel only because I use, like I explained earlier, I make such big batches that I need that extra power. Um, and last note, I saw, I think, I'm not sure if it was a, a CES announcement by ANOVA or where I saw it. I looked on their website and I couldn't find it, but it sounds like they're coming out with another circulator and it's going to be a scaled down version of this guy even with controls it looks like, which would be great. And it's gonna be $99 from what the announcement said. And it's gonna be called the Nano. And just looking at it, it's probably, I'd guess it to be probably the four to 600 watt range. So to cook for four, probably four or five, maybe even six people, you know, at home, it's gonna be plenty. And judging by the picture, it looks like it's gonna be about the size of the Jewel, but it'll have, it looks like it has a little touch screen and maybe a physical knob I didn't quite see. But um, now that's something I'm definitely interested in, especially for traveling. Um, it's, you know, if it's about the size of the jewel with the ease of use of a physical control and not having to, you know, screw around with the app, then that would be great. Uh, that's about the long and the short of it. If anyone has any questions, uh, leave comments below. And hope you guys enjoyed watching. Thanks for stopping by. And uh, I will. Uh, put the actual video footage I took of the tests uh, at the end here and the only thing it really is just a sped up version of the camera on some timers and I already gave you the time so it's up to you whether you really want to watch it or not. Alright, thanks guys and have a great day.